Ghostly tales, yet mirrors of human life. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Encountering Chinese. Ghostly tales from Liao Zhai. Today, I'm going to tell you a story called God of Thunder. Yu Yinha and Xia Pingzi were fellow villagers in their early years, and later became classmates as they grew up. Consequently, the two naturally became very close friends. Xia Pingzi demonstrated exceptional intelligence during his childhood, gaining a local reputation by the age of 10. Yu Yinha, humbly, sought to learn from him and Xia Pingzi, never tiring, earnestly guided him. As a result, Yu Yunha's literary talents improved every day, and soon both individuals gained recognition in their hometown. However, despite their local acclaim, both Yu Yunha and Xia Pingzi faced misfortune in the Imperial Examination Hall. Every time they participated in the imperial examination, they ended up unsuccessful. Later, Xia Pingzi succumbed to a plague, and due to poverty, his family was unable to provide him with a proper burial. In response, Yu Yunha stepped forward, taking the initiative to bear the responsibility of burying his deceased friend. Not only that, but he also helped take care of the infant and widowed wife left behind by Xia Pingzi. Yu Yunha provided them with regular assistance in food and drink. Whenever he received a bushel and a half of grain, he would split it in half, sharing it equally with the Xia family. The widow and orphans of Xia Pingzi survived thanks to his relief efforts. Therefore, many scholars highly respected Yu Yunha for his virtue and righteousness. As Yu Yunha had limited wealth himself and needed to support Xia Pingzi's wife and children, his own livelihood became more challenging each day. Yu Yunha sighed. Talented individuals like Xia Pingzi die without achieving their full potential. What about someone like me, an ordinary person? Life is short, and I should enjoy it in a timely manner. Living miserably year-round like this, I'm afraid I won't live long enough to see the day when I succeed and serve the country. I cannot waste my life in vain, I should find another way soon. Consequently, he decided to give up the imperial examinations and venture into business. Unexpectedly, after only half a year of business, Yu Yunha's wealth reached a comfortable level, achieving a modest prosperity. One day, Yu Yunha, staying as a guest in Jinling, was resting in an inn. He noticed a tall, robust man with a melancholic expression wandering around him. Yu Yunha asked the man, Would you like to have something to eat? However, the man remained silent. Yu Yunha pushed his own food towards the man, encouraging him to eat. The man quickly devoured the offered food. Yu Yunha then bought enough food for two and offered it to the man, who ate all of it again. Yu Yunha asked the innkeeper to bring a large piece of pork elbow and a table full of steamed buns for the man, who astonishingly consumed several people's worth of food before feeling satisfied. After eating, he thanked Yu Yunha, saying, In the past three years, I have never eaten as much as I did today. Yu Yunha commented. You must be a strong man. But why are you in such a destitute state? The man replied. 
I have offended the heavens and faced punishment. The reason is something I cannot tell you now. Yu Yunha inquired about where the man lived, and he said, I have no dwelling on land, no boat on the water. In the morning, I am in the village, in the evening, I am in the city. I have no fixed abode. After chatting for a while, Yu Yunha started packing to leave. However, the man continued to follow him, seemingly reluctant to part ways. Yu Yunha bid him farewell, but the man said, Misfortune is about to befall you, yet I cannot forget the kindness of the meal you provided. Finding it strange, Yu Yunha agreed to let him accompany him. That evening, Yu Yunha offered to buy dinner for the man, but he declined, saying, No need. I only need to eat a few meals a year. This made Yu Yunha even more intrigued. The next day, Yu Yunha loaded his goods, preparing to cross the river. When the boat reached the middle of the river, a sudden strong wind arose, and the waves surged. Shortly after, his cargo ship capsized, and both Yu Yunha and the mysterious man fell into the river. After a while, the wind subsided, and the man, carrying Yu Yunha on his back, miraculously floated on the waves. They managed to board another passenger ship. After placing Yu Yunha on the ship, the man leaped back into the water. Before long, he pulled back a boat, assisted Yu Yunha onto it, and instructed him not to move. The man dove into the river again, using his arms to transport the goods to Yu Yunha's boat. He repeated this process several times, filling the boat with goods. Yu Yunha was extremely grateful and exclaimed, Saving my life is already more than enough, I dare not hope to recover these goods. Yu Yunha checked the cargo and was astonished to find that not a single item was lost. He expressed even more gratitude to the man, believing he had encountered a divine being. Yu Yunha untied the mooring ropes, ready to depart. The man bid farewell, but Yu Yunha insisted on keeping him, pleading with him to stay. Reluctantly, the man stayed and crossed the river with Yu Yunha. Yu Yunha smiled at the man and said, After surviving this calamity, I've only lost a golden hairpin, truly fortunate. The man, upon hearing this, attempted to jump into the river to search for it. Yu Yunha hurriedly stopped him, but the man had already disappeared into the water. Yu Yunha was stunned for a moment, then suddenly saw the man resurface with a smile on his face, holding the missing golden hairpin. He handed it to Yu Yunha and said, Fortunately, I didn't let you down. Other people on the ship were amazed by this extraordinary scene. Yu Yunha and the man returned to their hometown, and Yu Yunha insisted that the man stay at his house. The man ate only once every 10 days, consuming an unimaginable amount of food each time. One day, the man bid farewell to Yu Yunha again, who tried his best to persuade him to stay. Although it was daytime, the sky was covered with dark clouds as if a storm was about to come. Distant thunder could be heard. Yu Yunha sighed. I wonder what it's like inside those clouds. And what is thunder? The man chuckled and said, Are you thinking of flying into the clouds? Soon after, 
Yu Yunha felt unusually sleepy and took a nap on the bed. When he woke up, he felt as if he was swaying, not lying on the bed. Opening his eyes, Yu Yunha discovered himself surrounded by clouds, and the clouds seemed to envelop him like cotton wool. Bewildered, Yu Yunha stood up, feeling dizzy as if he were on a boat. He attempted to step down, realizing the ground was soft and seemingly out of reach. Looking up, he saw the stars right in front of him, embedded in the sky like lotus seeds in a lotus pod. Large stars were like big barrels, medium-sized ones resembled small barrels, and the smallest were no larger than wine cups and rice bowls. Yu Yunha tried to touch the stars, finding that the large ones were immovable, but the small ones could be swayed and even plucked. He plucked one small star and hid it in his sleeve. Looking down through the clouds, Yu Yunha saw a vast silver sea of clouds below, and the city on the ground appeared no larger than beans. He couldn't help but worry. If I accidentally fall and lose my footing, where will my body go? Soon after, Yu Yunha saw two dragons skillfully driving a carriage from a distance. The dragon tails cracked like whips, resembling the sound of herding cattle. The carriage carried large barrels, with a circumference of over 10 meters, all filled with water. Dozens of people used large ladles to scoop water and sprinkle it into the clouds. When they noticed Yu Yunha, they were astonished. The man who had once saved Yu Yunha approached and said to the others, This gentleman is my friend. The man handed a ladle to Yu Yunha, asking him to join in sprinkling water. At that time, the ground was suffering from drought, and Yu Yunha, lifting the ladle, aimed toward his hometown. Shortly afterward, the man approached Yu Yunha and said, I was originally a thunder god. Due to a mistake in my work, I failed to make it rain on time and was sent to the human realm for three years. Today, my sentence is complete, so let us bid farewell here. The thunder god threw a rope, several thousand meters long, at Yu Yunha's feet, telling him to hold on to the end and descend to the mortal world. Though frightened, Yu Yunha followed the instructions and grasped the rope, descending rapidly. He heard the whistling wind around him, and in an instant, he landed on the ground. Yu Yunha surveyed his surroundings and realized he had landed just outside the village. Shortly afterward, the descending rope was slowly retracted into the clouds and soon disappeared. Yu Yunha's hometown had not seen rain for a long time, with only a shallow shower extending one finger deep in places ten miles away. However, the village where Yu Yunha lived was exceptionally fortunate, as rainwater had already filled the ditches. Yu Yunha returned home, and upon reaching into his sleeve, he discovered that the star he had plucked was still there. He took it out and placed it on the table, examining it closely. The star appeared dark and stone-like, but at night, it emitted a radiant glow, illuminating the surrounding walls. Yu Yunha cherished this treasure and carefully wrapped it layer by layer for safekeeping. Whenever noble and refined guests visited, he would bring out the star to shine indoors, adding to the festive atmosphere for the drinkers. When people faced the star, its beams would make it difficult for them to keep their eyes open. One night, as Yu Yunha's wife was washing her hair facing the star, 
she suddenly noticed the light of the star diminishing, and eventually, it flew around the room like fireflies. Astonished, Yu Yunha's wife saw the star fly into her mouth. She was frightened, coughed forcefully but couldn't expel it, and inadvertently swallowed it. In great distress, she rushed to tell Yu Yunha about the strange incident. Yu Yunha was also puzzled and didn't understand what was happening. Later that night, after falling asleep, Yu Yunha dreamt of Xia Pingzi appearing before him. Xia Pingzi said, I was originally the Little Dipper star in the sky. I will forever remember your kindness in the past. Thanks to you bringing me from the sky to the mortal world, our connection hasn't been severed. Today, I will be reborn as your son to repay your kindness. At this point, Yu Yunha was over 30 years old and had no offspring, so he was delighted by this dream. From that day forward, Yu Yunha's wife became pregnant. On the day of delivery, the room was filled with radiant light, resembling the glow when the star was placed on the table. Thus, Yu Yunha named the child Xing'er. As Xing'er grew older, he proved to be exceptionally clever and intelligent. At the age of 16, he passed the imperial examination and became a jinsher. At the end of the story, the author provides the following commentary. He remarks that Yu Yunha became renowned in the county for his skill in writing, but eventually, he discovered that his destined position was not here. In the end, he was able to gracefully give up the life of a literary man, akin to shedding old shoes. How does this differ from Ban Chao the Eastern Han military strategist, abandoning literature for a military career? As for the Thunder God who appreciated Yu Yunha's kindness in providing a meal, and Xia Pingzi repaying the friendship of helping his wife and children, could it be that gods and humans reciprocate personal favors privately? In reality, this is the Creator justly rewarding virtuous and exceptional individuals. Alright. That's all for today's ghostly tale. God of Thunder. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Please also encourage everyone to comment and share more. We'll see you in the next episode.